Good morning. Welcome to worship here at the First Presbyterian Church of Easton. Both welcome to folks in our beautiful sanctuary. It's lovely to have folks in person after a little bit of a break. And welcome to folks that join us online. Today we celebrate communion, so if you are home, please have your communion elements ready. If you are here, we are going to um, come forward for communion. Um, and then in subsequent Sundays, our elders and deacons will be once again um, serving communion. But today we will be coming forward to receive the elements. We have a few announcements to make for the life of our church. Busy as we are, today is Pasta Sunday. Um, you can continue to bring pasta here on Sundays or up until Tuesday, February 8th. We'll gather these and bring these to um, Project of Easton to help with their food pantry. Uh, the other announcement we, we make has to do with our connection to the Presbyterian Church USA. One of the ways that we keep connected with our our denomination and other Presbyterian churches is we collect a per capita donation from um, each member. This year it is $43.13. If you can donate that to the church, we will pass it on um, and appreciate you helping us keep connected and supporting our broader denominational ministries. We have good news to share. Um, folks have uh, ex um, have an interest in Bible study, and we had planned to have one in Lent. And so we are moving forward with our Lent 2022 Bible study, and it looks like we are going to explore having it on Sundays. The theme is What My Grandmother Taught Me, a beautiful Bible study that looks at the names that Matthew lists of women in Jesus' genealogy, which is very unusual. And so we'll be looking at the people named in those stories, and also reflecting on the women who have impacted our lives and our faith journeys. So that will begin on March 6th, on Sundays. Um, after church, um, we're looking at maybe doing a soup and scripture. So uh, look forward to joining with you on those times um, beginning March 6th. Friends, um, our blessing box outside continues to um, have great use, so we hope that you will consider signing up to sponsor a week. There is a sign-up sheet if you are physically here out by our church offices, and if you would, are online and would like to sign up for filling the blessing box to feed our hungry neighbors, you can simply call the church office and we will let you know what spots are still available. Another opportunity we have to help feed our neighbors has emerged recently. Um, we have been contacted to help our neighbors at Trinity Episcopal Church with their ARC luncheon. And we are sponsoring lunch on September, on uh, fe February 26th, on Saturday. And we're asking for donations. I'm moving us all the way back to September. I don't know why. We're in February. So um, Saturday, February 26th, if you can make donations, of um, snacks, uh, fruit cups, desserts, bottles of water. Then the Girl Scout Troop uh, 856 will be putting those bags together to help feed our neighbors. If you'd like to call Nancy Udit if you have any questions. Please sign up for Safe Harbor dinners as well. It's another way we support our neighbors. Um, soon we will once again begin our midweek meditation. If you are someone who likes more contemplative prayer, we gather here in this space um, from 11 to 11.30 midweek, and we are starting again on February 9th. Also on February 9th, I'm hosting um, my monthly brown bag lunch. If you would like to come and just chat, um, there's, no, there's no program. We really just have lunch. So bring your, bring your lunch and chat with us. It's a nice opportunity just to be in fellowship. Speaking of fellowship, we are looking forward. We do, we do like having our time together for coffee and, and, and goodies, so we hope to begin um, fellowship time again on February 20th. If you are somebody who could host, again, if you're online, if you could call the church, if you're physically here, we have sign-up sheets. And what we've added is two slots for every Sunday so that we have a host and a helper. And 
we are looking for the congregation to make these uh, fellowship times possible. So if you would like to sign up for that, please do so. And friends, we are so looking forward to March when our choirs are going to return to us, but for now they are on hiatus. And those are my announcements today. Have I missed anything? Hearing none. Then I invite you, good friends, to join your voices with mine as we turn to worship, as we gather together as God's people. Let us speak the words of the call to worship. God is with us. We are not alone. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to God. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Let us come and share the bread of life. Trusting in God's mercy and grace and endless love for us, we come before God in this first prayer of confession, speaking words initially together in one voice as we have all fallen short of the glory of God, and then having a time for personal confession with God. Will you join your voices and your hearts with mine in prayer? Living God, today we confess that we allow our fear to drown out your voice. We are afraid of the unknown and things outside our control. Help us hand these items over to you every hour of the day. Help us to be quiet and still, waiting for your will to be revealed rather than running ahead of you. Keep our hearts open to the Spirit's working. Remind us that we have daily bread from heaven and a safe shelter in you when we are tempted to look elsewhere for hope and help. Amen. Brothers and sisters in Christ, believe the good news. In and through Christ Jesus, you have been forgiven. Thanks be to God.
Chapter 6, verses 25 through 44. When they found him on the other side of the sea, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you come here? And Jesus answered them, Very truly, I tell you, you are looking for me not because you saw signs, but because you ate your fill of the loaves. Do not work for the food that perishes, but for the food that endures for eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. For it is on him that God the Father has set his seal. Then they said to him, What must we do to perform the works of God? Jesus answered them, This is the work of God, that you believe in him whom he has sent. So they said to him, What sign are you going to give us then, so that we may see it and believe you? What work are you performing? Our ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness as it was written. He gave them bread from heaven to eat. Then Jesus said to them, Very truly, I tell you, it was not Moses who gave you the bread from heaven, but it is my Father who gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of heaven is that which comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. They said to him, Sir, give us this bread always. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never go be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. But I said to you that you have seen me and yet do not believe. Everything that the Father gives me will come to me, and anyone who comes to me I will never drive away. For I have come down from heaven not to do my own will, but the will of him who sent me. For this is the will of him who sent me, that I should no lose nothing of all that he has given me, but raise it up on the last day. This is indeed the will of my Father, that all who see the Son and believe in him may have eternal life, and I will raise them up on the last day. Then the Jews began to complain about him because he said, I am the bread that came down from heaven. They are saying, is not this Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How can he now say, I have come down from heaven? Jesus answered them, do not complain among yourselves. No one can come to me unless drawn by the Father who sent me, and I will raise that person up on the last day. Let us pray. O Holy One, you are the giver of life, the giver of wisdom. Open your word to us now that we might be fed and grow in your word. Bless the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts. In the name of Christ Jesus, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. As you are well aware, this year our church has embraced the mission theme, Joining Hands to End Hunger. This is a recognition of the physical hunger and lack of food and access to food that people both near and far experience. Many have known hunger and food insecurity. Food insecurity is not having reliable means to have food and nourishment that is needed. Hunger is real in Easton. And we know this through our partnerships with Safe Harbor and Project of Easton's Food Pantry. This is nothing new to this congregation. But our blessing box has brought the reality of the needs of our neighbors close to home. 
Many of us have come to church to discover a neighbor out at the box. A gentleman who works full time, but who lives in his truck. A young couple who lives in tents by the river, but who have pets. And they don't want to go to the shelter where they might be separated and when they can't have their pets with them. A daughter and an elderly mother who have a small studio apartment nearby, but for whom money is tight. The people who are coming to our box are of all ages and races and backgrounds. Some are working, some struggle with addiction, some are elderly or have health problems, and all of them are blessed by food. The truth is that God has, has enriched our world with enough resources of land and water and soil and plant and animal life and sun and air that no one on this planet should have to go hungry. But for some reason, and you can debate with me about why, our greed, our lack of compassion, or just our lack of imagination and commitment to learning how to share the gifts that we have. There are so many who hunger. Today's scripture is about two kinds of hunger. Jesus has just left a crowd, a crowd who gathered to listen to his word, and it ended up being around lunchtime, and he realized they must be hungry. And the disciples said, send them away. But Jesus cared about how hungry they were. And he said, let us give them something to eat. And that is when the miracle of the 5,000 happened. This is the backdrop to our scripture today. People come to Jesus and they, and they start to have a conversation with him. And they, what are they interested in? Jesus pushes at them. Is it that I have fed the people with this miracle of the bread and loaves of fishes? Or is it that I fed them in another way? Two kinds of hunger. Jesus says in our scripture today, I am the bread of life. I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never hunger. And whoever believes in me will never thirst. Jesus cares about the physical hunger of his people. But the hunger and thirst that Jesus offers to satisfy the hearts and minds and souls of those he offers the bread of life himself, he is feeding another kind of hunger. What is this hunger? Mother Teresa once said, the spiritual poverty of the Western world is much greater than the physical poverty of our people, meaning the people of India. You, she goes on to say, in the West, have millions of people who suffer such terrible loneliness and emptiness. They feel unloved and unwanted. These people are not hungry in a physical sense, she says, but they are in another way. They know they need something more than money, yet they don't know what it is. Have you ever found yourself hungry? Hungry for a richer life? Not material life, as Mother Teresa points out, but a richer life. Richer in meaning and peace and love and acceptance. Have you ever hungered for comfort in a storm? Whatever the storm of that life that you are going through at that time might be. Have you ever hungered for abundant life? That stuff 
cannot enrich. Then you have known spiritual hunger. Today's reading from the book of John offers wisdom from Jesus. A commentary from the Theology of Work focuses on John 6 and summarizes our reading today. Saying in the sixth chapter of John, Jesus was having another one of his window-rattling conversations about manna from heaven. In Jesus' day, manna was a reminder of a specific time in history when the nation for the nation of Israel. Just to say manna, and his listeners were transported back 1,300 years to Israel's 40-year exile in the wilderness. Each day in the wilderness, God fed the Israelites with manna. Manna means bread from heaven. This heavenly bread was such a big deal that they made a point of celebrating it, the gift of God, every year during Passover. Bread from heaven. Jesus masterfully uses this discussion about manna, about manna and bread to teach them, even though 1,300 years had passed and they had settled in the promised land and founded a nation and constructed a capital and built a glorious temple, life still felt to the Israelites, to the people of God, that they were in exile. They still hungered. They famished for the bread of heaven, for something more. And I would say that today, almost 2,000 years later, we are still starving. We are still famished for God. Why do I try so hard to be likable and to show people I'm a good person, and yet I still feel like no one truly knows me? What have I done to deserve yet another challenge in my life? The money is so tight. The cancer has come back. My marriage is on the rocks. Those are the kinds of situations that fill us with emptiness and hunger. You can fill in the blanks. You have lived these stretches of exile and hunger. Then comes the yearning for rest, for peace, for healing, from that weariness that is bone and soul deep and can only be satisfied by God. The longing to be fully loved, to be known, to have life in all its abundance. We know that Jesus offers himself as the peace that we need, as the song that can fill our hearts, as the light that can lead us in the darkness, and the love that will never let us go. God gives us himself as manna from heaven, the bread of life. It feeds, Jesus feeds us, because Jesus is a gift from God. That is what today's passage is all about. And that is what we celebrate at this table. We celebrate that with all the hunger of our hearts, we can be satisfied by God's love and grace. So today I ask you to be mindful of both kinds of hunger that are around us. Right before us, here in this space, we have a basket full of pasta. Our neighbors near have that same hunger for physical wellness. This is true. But our neighbors also have the same soul deep and heavy heart hunger which we have known. And we can offer them a piece, a piece of the manna, of the bread of life, if we reach out to share with them the good news 
of who Jesus Christ is. We can offer them a taste of peace and hope and joy that we have known. We can invite them to the table to taste and to see the goodness of God. And as we are aware of the hunger of our souls, we continue to fight the hunger that plagues our neighbors who have no food. Even on these cold winter days, especially on these cold winter days, please continue to support our blessing box and the meals for Safe Harbor and the ARC luncheon and the pasta all these ways that we feed our neighbors in concrete ways. But the truth is that when we, need, when we do these things, when we bring in the pasta, when we fill the blessing box, when we go to project, we are actually feeding our own souls as we do the work of God. That is what the people asked Jesus in today's passage. How do we do the work of God? Jesus invites us to feed our hungry neighbors, to know that we are the hands and feet of God, to know our purpose in this world as servant leaders. So on this day, we have pasta before us. We have the act of service. And we have the table before us. When we share the bread of life, we are enriched by being the people of God together. As we share communion, we are strengthened in body and spirit to face whatever challenges we have in our daily lives. We are strengthened in body and spirit to serve others in Christ's name. This is the living bread. This is the body of Christ. We are the body of Christ. So today, know that you are welcome to this table, that God offers you all that you need for your body, heart, mind, and soul to move through this life as a beloved child of God with abundant life. Thanks be to God. Amen.
And the people will come from the north and the south, from the east and the west, to feast at God's table. Today you are welcomed, for this is not my table. This is not a Presbyterian table. This is the table of our Lord, and there is a place for you. Come and eat. Will you join your hearts with mine and your voices as we speak together the great prayer of thanksgiving? The Lord be with you, and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is truly right and our greatest joy to praise you, O God, for all your works. For you created the world and called it good. You made us in your image to live together in love. And you made a covenant with us. And even when we turned from you, you remained faithful. Therefore, with all creation, we sing your praise, saying, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. Thank you, O Lord, for sending us your Son. He lived among us and told us your story. He healed the sick and welcomed sinners. He shared our pain and died our death, and then rose to new life that we might live and all creation might be restored. And we give you thanks that the Lord Jesus, on the night before he died, he took bread. And after giving thanks, he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples, saying, This is my body, given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, Jesus took cup and saying, this cup is a new covenant sealed in my blood. Whenever you share this, do this in remembrance of me. Remembering your boundless love revealed to us in Jesus Christ, Holy One, we break bread and share the cup, giving ourselves to you to live for him in joy and praise. For great is the mystery of faith, that Christ has died, Christ is risen, and Christ will come again. Gracious God, pour out your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these gifts of bread and wine, that they may be for us the body and blood of Christ, and that we may be his body for the world. By your Spirit, unite us with Christ and one another until we feast with him and with all your saints in your eternal realm of justice and peace. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor are yours, almighty God, now and forever. As our Savior Christ taught us, we are bold together to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Your kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and give us your debts as we forgive our debtors 
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Brothers and sisters, Jesus said, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never hunger, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. Come now to Christ's table. No, you are welcome. The bread of life. The cup of Christ. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Come and eat.
Let us pray. We thank you, O God, that through word and sacrament you have given us your Son, who is the true bread from heaven and food for eternal life. So strengthen us in your service that our daily lives may show our thanks. Offer your peace to our broken world and lift up those who are burdened by grief, illness, or injustice. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Brothers and sisters, siblings in Christ, let us give thanks to God at all times for everything that God has provided, and in gratitude offer to God a portion of what God has given to us. Please make your gifts by leaving them in the plate in the rear of the sanctuary online or through the mail. God is good and gracious and kind. Give thanks to the Lord our God. Amen. And now, I pray, may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Go in love. Go in love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. 